The Spanish language is not a Latin American language. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? So, representation, it's a weird thing. Because look, I think we can all agree that there's no better feeling than watching a movie, a show, or playing a game and seeing a character that not only acts like you, but also looks like you. If a piece of media is amazing, that's already a plus, but if you can relate to it on a personal level, that's like the icing on the cake. Having a character that not only represents you, but also your culture is one of the best things in media. And when done right, it could lead to so many iconic moments. But representation is also a double-edged sword. Because like I said before, when it's done right, it can be one of the best things in the world. But when it's done wrong, it has the potential to be one of the biggest dumpster fires to ever grace your screen. And writers will run the risk of offending a lot, and I do mean a lot of people. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. Primos was probably Disney's most highly anticipated animated show of this year. Oh my god, <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've ever seen a show become so hated before it even released. And that's mainly due to the fact that Disney's Primos had one of the most controversial introductions out of any cartoon I've seen in history. So controversial to the point where a large portion of the Latin community wanted to boycott this cartoon. Then the show seemingly got cancelled out of nowhere, only for Disney to try to do major PR damage and drop another trailer. And then the show was finally released in July of this year. And I remember when the show finally released, I watched it because I wanted to see throughout all the controversy, was the show actually any good? Short answer, no. But in honor of the train wreck that was Primos, I thought it'd be fun to take a look down the controversy timeline to see just why this show was so hated. So if you've never actually heard of Primos before, you're probably wondering, what could this cartoon actually be about to be so controversial and to have so many people prey on its downfall? Well, the general premise of the show is actually pretty simple. The show basically revolves around the main character, Tater, a little girl who over the course of summer break wants to learn who she is as a person and wants to really discover herself. And because of this, she's really excited for the summer break. But everything goes up in flames when Tater mom tells her that she invited Tater's 12 cousins to come move in with them for the summer. So Throughout the course of the show, Tater's forced to not only learn who she is as a person, but also forced to manage living life with her 12 cousins. And you know, if you took high school Spanish, I think it's pretty clear why the show's called Primos. And look, I'm gonna be 100% honest, this isn't a terrible idea for a show. From the basic premise, I could see a lot of different ideas and episodes being pushed out of this show. It would definitely be one of those episodic cartoons where it's just a new random thing every episode. Now would I say the concept is groundbreaking, generational, a cartoon we'll remember 20 years from now? Absolutely not. But honestly, that isn't a bad thing. I think we've really hit a point where animation, especially in the West, has become so good in the last couple years and we're getting all these generational projects dropping almost every Every other month. Look, I'ma just say it man, people have gotten spoiled. Everybody's expecting any animated project to come out to be the next groundbreaking thing. But if we're being honest, everything doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Sometimes we need shows that just aren't that good, but are entertaining. There were a lot of shows like that growing up and I feel like the older I get, they just don't have shows like that anymore. But unfortunately though, Primos is neither good nor entertaining. I really tried to get through the first season of Primos, but it was just so boring. None of the characters were really interesting and the plots were even more dull. I guess the only redeeming thing would be is that the music was like kinda good at times because of course it had to be a musical. But even with that they still had a lot of tone deaf songs in here. Oh yeah and you're probably wondering when I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. This has to be one of the most blatant ripoffs of the Loud House that I've ever seen in my life. Like when I first heard the concept of the show, then I saw the original trailer, the only thing I could think about in my head was, doesn't Nickelodeon have a show that's really similar to this? And you want to know what's even crazier? I remember when this show first came out, I made a TikTok talking about it and somebody in my comments pointed out the fact that Nickelodeon has a spinoff of the Loud House called the Casa Grandes. And when you compare the spinoff to Primos, there are even more similar similarities. Now look, I don't know if this was Disney intentionally trying to recreate the success of the Loud House on their brand or if this was just a strange set of circumstances. But whatever it is, I know one thing for sure, it didn't do any favors for Primos. Because like I said before, to this day, it's one of the most hated cartoons that Disney has ever released. So now that you know what Primos is and what it's about, let's actually dig into the controversy and see just why people hated it so much. Now the first thing that people were quick to jump on this show about was from the previous 
previews that we had seen before it was released, there were multiple instances of the show using Spanish grammatically incorrect. With the most popular example being in the actual introduction song, the main character Tater says Oye Primos, which doesn't really make sense to the context that it's used because it's a singular term, which kind of goes against the fact that Tater's talking about her 12 cousins. And look, maybe some people would have gave it a pass if that was just like a one-off line, but no, that was the title of the show. The original title of the show was Oye Primos. And like I said before, representation is a great thing, but the thing is, people want to feel like it's genuine. People want to see themselves and their culture represented, but they want it to feel real. They want to feel like the people who worked on these projects took the time and effort to show these aspects of the community. And because people want it to feel real, they want it to feel genuine, they will look for any reason to disqualify a project if things look off. So when you have a show that's supposed to give representation to a community and the title of the show can't even show respect to that community's language, obviously people aren't going to be happy. But it wasn't just that one line. A lot of people gave the show backlash because of the cousin's original names. More specifically, the baby cousin's name sounding really similar to something that, if I say, might get my channel demonetized. There was also a large portion of people that thought the show was just outright racist, claiming that the show perpetuated many Latin American stereotypes. One of them being the big family living in a small space. And honestly, I don't even know how Disney approved this, but originally, the name of the city that Primos took place in was called Earthquake Heights, which is honestly one of the most tone-deaf things I've ever heard. That's like the equivalent of having a show take place in New Orleans and calling it Hurricane City, knowing that the city has a history of hurricane disasters. And eventually, the backlash would get so bad that the creator of the show would come out addressing a lot of it, saying that a lot of things in Primos were based on her childhood and how she grew up. I mean, I just feel like everything I do is through that lens, you know? I mean, this is this is like the, the culture I've been raised in and steeped in. It's my family culture. Um, it's, you know, it was all around where I grew up. Um, so everything that I do is is through that lens. Um, you know, any any note that I get, any scene that I'm, you know, uh, working on, it's all through, you know, the lens of, of who I am and like what culture I was raised in. And you know, I feel like maybe if this would have been the end of it, Primos might not have got as much hate because they did go on to do things like change the name of characters, change the name of the city, and really try to revise the show to get people to like it. But unfortunately, this wasn't the end of it because for some reason, and I don't know why, I don't even know who allowed this or how this was possible, but the lead voice actress for Primos got on Instagram Live to address all the hate and said this. The Spanish language is not a Latin American language. It's a language the Spanish conquistadors forced upon Latin American people. The only reason we're Latin people and not Native American people is because of that distinction. So be mad at me all you want for misspelling words in Spanish. Be mad at me all you want for mispronouncing words in Spanish. That doesn't take away from the fact that I am a Mexican-American, Native American woman. We're trying to make a good show for kids. For kids that feel left out. For kids that are different. For kids who don't have a full grasp on any language, no matter where they live. And if you're going to be mad at that... Mm, I don't know. Dude, I don't even know how she was allowed to do this. I could have swore when you work for Disney, they make you sign your entire life away alongside your social media accounts. Out of everything that made people hate on Primos before it even came out, this right here, this video was the nail in the coffin. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I understand when you're working on a project, when you're putting time and effort into it, you want to see it succeed. You want to see it go far. And when people speak negatively about it, it's going to upset you. I completely understand that. But at the same time, when you work in an industry like television, entertainment, you're selling a product. And in the case of a show like Primos, not only are you selling a product, you're selling a product to a specific demographic, a demographic that you're saying you're trying to represent. So then why would you hop on your sofa, open your phone, get on Instagram, and then record this video where you're basically coming at the audience of the show that's going to watch the show? I just can't see how she thought this was a good idea, but I'm actually really interested in finding out how did the other people who worked on this show react to seeing that video? Because once that video came out, the Primo's hate was at an all-time high. Now look, ultimately, did Primo's deserve the hate it got? 
probably like i said i'm not from the latin community so i can't really tell people what they can and can't get mad at but there were just too many weird things going on before this show even aired but i do feel like if the voice actress never made the video that she made the creator came out with the same comments that she made and primos was an actual good show i don't think so many people would have hated on this show i actually think some people might have even gave it a shot and watched it but that just isn't what happened and when primos came out most people either didn't watch it or the people who did watch it gave it pretty low reviews because uh like i said before the show's not that good but i guess if there's a lesson to be learned here it's if you're gonna do representation do it right or you could always just do option b and go off on your fans on instagram but if you made it to the end of the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload my next video. Make sure to follow my socials in the description if you want to keep up with me. But until then, it's been your boy CorinXV, and I'm off this.